Del Martin and Phyllis Leone, a lesbian couple in San Francisco, fought back against the debate of gay male rights over lesbian rights, and they finally settled through diplomacy on the first lesbian organization for women by women. Through this organization, they created a safe space for queer women and the first ever lesbian magazine. Here is their story. During the 1950s, the LGBTQ community was gaining publicity, both with people coming out about their sexualities and others pushing back against it. Homosexuality in general had not been discussed publicly until that point, and many did not know what it was. Barbara Emmerth, a member of the DOB, admitted that when she was growing up in West Virginia, there were no stigmas around homosexuality simply because no one had ever heard of it before. Things rapidly changed around the 1950s, though with widespread panic over the Lavender Scare, which threatened to fire all queer people from government jobs. This was followed by continuous raids at gay bars and the overall rise in knowledge of the LGBTQ community. Evelyn Bailey, in her article, Shoulders to Stand On, Daughters of Belitis, states, the years after the end of World War II were some of the most socially repressive in US history. In 1950, the State Department identified homosexuals as security risks. Politically motivated police raids on gay bars took place all over the U.S. and Canada. Laws were enacted prohibiting cross-dressing for men and women. Queer people faced dangers of being fired, arrested, or otherwise abused if they were to come out. Despite this, homosexuality was more publicized than it had ever been. Political groups like the Mattachine Society were formed for gay men, and gay bars were founded as a social point for members of the LGBTQ community. Like many things at the time, being gay became viewed as male-dominated. Lesbians were underrepresented, if represented at all. In 1955, five years after the foundation of the Mattachine Society, Del Martin and Phyllis Leone helped form the first lesbian social group, the Daughters of Belitis. In her historical essay for Found SF, Zoe Sonnenberg states that the DOB mirrored the Mattachine Society and its homophile principles in many ways. However, the DOB focused their efforts primarily on the causes of women and lesbians, and at times members resented their representation as auxiliary to the Mattachine Society. The DOB was the first lesbian civil and political rights organization in the United States. It was named after a collection of lesbian poetry by Pierre Louis called Songs of Belitis. It first began in San Francisco in 1955, but quickly moved to Chicago, Los Angeles, and New York. It was advertised as a woman's organization for the purpose of promoting the integration of the homosexual into society. Over its lifetime, the DOB helped many queer women come to terms with their sexuality and meet others like themselves in a safe way. Their meetings were mainly social gatherings, but they would also hold open discussions with the groups about concerns facing lesbians and women at the time. With only eight members at the start, the DOB quickly grew. By the late 1950s, DOB chapters were founded all across the country some even in Australia. The DOB was a safe space where queer women could be themselves without the fear of arrest or harassment. In an interview with Judith Schwartz, a member of the DOB, she states that members often said that they felt safe at the DOB, almost like it was a home for them. Some women, of course, just like Barbara Giddings talks about, you know, you can get some really good quotes from her about what that felt for her, that oh my God, thank heavens, there's a home for me. You know, I, there's a place where I can go. Arcus Flynn, another member of the DOB, knew that she was gay by age 10, but being gay in the 50s wasn't ideal. Spending much of her time suppressing her feelings, she became deeply depressed. One day she found out about a club called the Daughters of Belitis, which would soon change her life. And what saved me is one day I wound up in Corvette's book department when Corvette's used to be on 46th Street. And there I found a book called um, The Grapevine, A Liberated View of Lesbianism by Jess Stern. It wouldn't be considered liberated today. <laughs> and I purchased the book and I found out about DOB. So I ran to the phone and I called information and I said, do you have a telephone number for the Daughters of Belitis in Manhattan? And I got the phone number and I went down and I stopped seeing the shrink and I threw the pills down. It's DOB really, I feel, saved my life. If there hadn't been an organization in those days, I really don't know what I would have done. Without the DOB, people like Arcus would never have been able to find others like them and a safe space to be themselves. In October 1956, Dell and Phyllis, along with the rest of the DOB, created The Ladder, a magazine for lesbian women. At the time, there were no lesbian magazines and there was almost no public information about queer women. Del Martin and Phyllis Lyon met while working at the same magazine company. And she came putzing in, 
chomping in, right? And her little suit and her high heels and carrying a briefcase. And I think that was the first time ever in my life I'd ever seen a woman carrying a briefcase. <laughs> so I had a party. <laughs> and she sat out in the kitchenette with all the men smoking cigars and trying to learn how to tie a tie, <laughs> which she never did. And that's how we met. Right? <laughs> she came over the next morning because she had discovered that in Seattle in those days she couldn't buy beer or anything else. Lyon, who was originally from Oklahoma, received a Bachelor of the Arts from California Berkeley and was working on the editorial staff. With both of them having backgrounds in journalism, they took it upon themselves to inform the public. When it officially became the latter in 1956, it was the first nationally distributed lesbian magazine and one of the first magazines to ever include lesbian statistics. However, it ended production in 1972 due to lack of funding. First created in San Francisco, California, the original creators were Del Martin, Phyllis Leone, Barbara Greer, Barbara Giddings, and Helen Sandoz. The latter included many different kinds of works, such as articles, interviews, poems, stories, and visuals. A common article was interviews with members of the DOB about their experience as queer women. The latter included varying opinions on different topics and a wide variety of works. In the beginning, the latter even included multiple articles from homophobes and doctors that sought to fix the members of the DOB and anyone reading the latter. In this quote, Barbara Giddings discusses how it was necessary for them to include anyone they could in the latter in order for them to gain traction. At first, we were so grateful just to have people, anybody, pay attention to us that we listened to and accepted everything they said, no matter how bad it was. That is how different the consciousness was at the time, but I must emphasize that it was essential for us to go through this before we could arrive at what we now consider our much more sensible attitudes. You don't just spring full blown into an advanced consciousness, you do it step by step. This magazine helped queer women feel a sense of community, see themselves represented in a positive light, and find acceptance in themselves. Their first convention was in 1960, held in San Francisco. It was the largest public gathering of lesbians in the U.S. as of 1960. In the late 60s, many of the DOB members' focus shifted more towards women's rights than gay rights, and as a result, the DOB officially ended in 1970. Dell and Phyllis can be considered the pioneers of the lesbian rights movement. In many ways, they normalized gay social groups for women. The 1969 Stonewall riots are often the first thing people think of when they think of early LGBTQ movements, but there were many other events and groups across the country that helped ignite the movement before Stonewall, the DOB being one of them. In 2008, after 55 years of being together, Del Martin, aged 87, and Phyllis Leon, 84, were the first same-sex couple to be officially married in San Francisco. The director of the National Center for Lesbian Rights, Kate Kendall, invited them, saying, This will hopefully be the last thing the movement will ever ask you to do, but do you want to get married? <laughs>